Meanwhile, the impact of COVID-19 on the entire human citizen is breathtaking. In one fell, in one fell soup, cultures, education, career, technology, politics, governance, uh, governance structure, socioeconomic theories, etc., have been drastically altered. The common ways of life have been changed overnight. Consequently, there are a lot of ongoing discussions, insane climbs on new thinking, that is looking at new ways of doing things, or better still, how to take advantage of COVID-19 to deal with the multidimensional layers of both emergent and future human and societal development issues. It has been acknowledged that one vital but better lesson Nigeria has learned from COVID-19 experience is that public health sector in the country has been in horrible, negligible, and deplorable condition. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, openly admitted this during the recent meeting with the leadership of the National Assembly, led by the Senate President, Ahmed Lawan, and Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabi Amila, to explain the activities of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19, especially the extent of the disaster and some grey issues regarding donations and government's handling of palliatives. To make sense of all of this, we have Olamide Okulaja, Dr. Olamide Okulaja, who is the Director of Advocacy and Communications, Farm Access Foundation. Also to join us is Dr. Joseph Bene, the General Practitioner in Ghana. Good to have you, uh, Dr. Okulaja and Joseph Bene. Good afternoon to you both. Um, Thank you. Is Dr. Afternoon. Okulaja on the line too? Good afternoon. All right, Dr. Okulaja, let's begin with you. When we speak of restructuring the health sector, what do you hope we would be addressing? Okay, um, thank you very much for having me here. I think the first thing before we start considering the restructuring of the health system is to look at what currently exists and seeing how we can strengthen what currently exists. Nigeria has a lot of um, good ideas on the table on how the health sector should be run. We have a system that divides the health sector into the primary, secondary, and tertiary levels, where each of these levels have people or, sec or uh, levels of government that are responsible for these levels. And at the same time, they have their roles and responsibilities. So um, rather than talk about restructuring the healthcare system, I think the conversation should be how can we strengthen the existing system that we have so that it can deliver on the mandate that it has been set up to do? Uh, all right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Okulaja. Let's move to Dr. Joseph. Uh, some have said that COVID-19 merely exposed the deficiency in our health system. You know, does that accurately describe the situation also in Ghana? Thank you again for, for having me. Um, yeah, uh, so I have to say that um, I'm in private practice and not actively involved in the public sector. Um, so, but my experience uh, in working in Ghana uh, clearly indicates that we uh, have a deficit. Um, uh, the, 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 the pandemic has actually exposed um, the existing inadequacies of our healthcare system. And we know that even the most developed um, economies our healthcare systems are struggling, and that is much more so for us who are in developing countries. It's exposed to deficits in the infrastructure, and it's also exposed deficits or inadequacies in the training of our personnel and the lack of strong clinical governance in our, in our healthcare institutions. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to Dr. Kulaja now. Uh, the question is, why... Are we having to address fun fundamental issues so many years down the line when it has to do with our health sector? Dr. Kulaja. Do we have Dr. Kulaja? One of the things that has happened um, in Nigeria is that over the last 10 to 15 years, Nigeria has been grossly underfunding the health sector. Um, we've had roughly between 3 to 6% of our government expenditure um, and budget spent on our health sector uh, for a population that has continually increased and uh, demanded more uh, healthcare services. Of course, this has put a strain on the existing infrastructure 
and has led to a total degradation of uh, different levels of healthcare. So it is no surprise that we are where we are today. And in fact, one of the things that the COVID um, pandemic has done is that it has increased what is referred to as the Overton window, where policies will now be reevaluated to see how more attention can be paid to the health sector. All right. Uh, policy to be reevaluated is a good point that you're highlighting there. Dr. Uh, Bene, let's come to you again. Uh, I mean, with COVID-19, there are so many changes that everyone is demanding, especially from the health sector. In your own case, are you beginning to see changes in response to the demand that is caused by the pandemic? Uh, yes, we, we've seen some changes, um, especially they've amped up the capacity for testing um, with uh, regards to the ability of our institutions to test. Uh, but these changes are not far reaching enough, um, especially at the beginning of the pandemic. A lot of us, these facilities were basically located in the big metropolis and big tertiary facilities in our capitals. Uh, we've seen efforts at moving some of these testings to some regions and some more remote parts of, of, of the country. Um, uh, especially in the northern parts of the country and in the western parts of, of Ghana. So uh, some efforts have been made, but we need a far broader uh, increase in, in infrastructure uh, to be able to cope with future uh, uh, pandemics. Uh, so these are some of the steps that are being taken, but these are not far-reaching enough, and I think more needs to be done. And, uh, Dr. Okulaja, for you, do you think pressure is being put at this time, uh, you know, in our own uh, case, when all eyes are on the health sector, if you like, to ensure that we don't come out of COVID-19 storm and then return to the way things were before COVID? So one of the things I have realized or we've seen is that the government of Nigeria has now focused its attention on the health sector. I mean, um, the, the COVID pandemic has identified the fragility of the health system. And so there's a lot more, uh, you know, attention and innovations that are coming into the health sector that, you know, the government is trying to see how they can adopt. Um, like uh, Winston Churchill said, it, it's, it, you know, let's try not to uh, waste a good crisis and take the opportunity of this crisis to see how we can redirect the healthcare system into what it is. And I think that the government of Nigeria is exploring this and is going to attempt to utilize this as an opportunity to do just that. Mm -hmm. Still, still on that, uh, Dr. Okulaja, what progress have you seen so far in terms of collaboration between the government and, you know, maybe private sectors uh, in, uh, in our health sector to see a better improvement from where we used to be or where we currently are? I mean, first of all, I think what's most important is that we're seeing an increased collaboration between the federal and the state government in addressing the issues of the pandemic. Uh, we are also seeing a situation where there's a lot of decentralization as against the centralized approach that the government has, uh, the federal government has taken uh, previously, where they are relegating a lot of the responsibilities to the state in terms of testing and isolation. Again, we're, we're seeing situations where states are beginning to uh, recognize the role that uh, the private sector can take. Um, in a public health care emergency. Ideally, for public health care emergencies, they are state-led and they are state-driven. But we're beginning to see governments um, taking note of what the private sector can bring on board and creating policies and regulations uh, that can foster good partnership between um, the government and the private sector. All right. And um, finally, for Dr. Bene, uh, what will it take? Some of the conversations that we'll be having around, especially here in Nigeria, is the fact that, you know, welfare for health workers and training is a crucial part. I'm wondering what it will take to put fundamentals in place, you know, in your own case, especially with regards to, again, the welfare and training of health workers moving forward. 
Yeah, so um, I just want to reiterate what my colleague just said earlier about the need for the uh, governments to spend a bit more on our healthcare system. Uh, I think the case, the, the, the percentage of GDP spent on healthcare in Ghana is similar to that spent in Nigeria, about 3 uh, to 3.6% annually, which is way uh, below what is required to actually have a fundamental shift uh, in, the, in the healthcare sector in our country. Uh, what we will take, we've already seen um, drives or at least some commitments from, from our government with regards to increasing infrastructure. Um, so it's all well and good to have shining, brand new uh, hospitals and facilities dotted all across the country. But I think that um, we need to also look at the training of our, of our healthcare personnel, right down from doctors, specialists, uh, to the nursing uh, staff. A, a fundamental shift in, in our training that is more responsive to the needs of the 21st century. Uh, because the people we care for are becoming more sophisticated and are demanding more and better quality. And that should match uh, the kind of um, uh, training we are offering to our healthcare uh, personnel uh, so that they are up to, to, to the tax of offering the, 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 the part of healthcare for our citizens. All right, and now to Dr. Okulaja. What of health insurance? You know, where are we as regards access to affordable health care? Mm -hmm. Health insurance. Health insurance is um, a very delicate and political uh, discussion because the only way that we can have a sustainable health care insurance system or scheme is if it is driven by government and driven by government in the sense that it has to be mandatory it has to be subsidized for those that cannot pay and government has to be the father uh, to the poor and ensure that they are also not socially excluded in the accessibility of quality health care services mm -hmm. in nigeria right now we have a law that is still in the uh, Senate, the, the NHIC law, and there are processes that are being put into place to see how that law can be passed uh, into an act, basically to ensure that health insurance is mandatory um, in the country. Again, several states, up to about 35 states, have passed their mandatory health insurance schemes in Nigeria but have a um, uh, majority have been unable to operationalize those schemes because uh, there are several factors that plague a country like Nigeria. For example, the formal to informal uh, ratio uh, of, of our people and also the prevalent poverty that exists and limiting their mm -hmm. ability to be able to contribute effectively. Uh, one of the interventions that the government has tried to also institute is what is referred to as the Basic Healthcare Provision Fund, which was established by Section, uh, Section 11 of the National Health Act. But there, there have also been a lot of discussions and conversations around the implementation of the Basic Healthcare Provision Fund, mm -hmm. and those conversations are still ongoing. So there's still a lot to be sought out in, in terms of health insurance in Nigeria. Uh, I mean, Ghana has done a, a, a lot better than Nigeria in right. terms of Let's ask Dr. Togbeni, who is there, to speak to us about the reality of health insurance also in Ghana. Yes, Dr. Togbeni? Okay. Uh, yes, um, uh, we've had um, a basic national health insurance scheme uh, operating for the better part of a decade, uh, or 10 years past now. Um, but again, um, the scope uh, that we can do a lot more uh, with our healthcare system. And uh, we basically need to um, open up the ac access. Um, so still, while out-of-pocket payment for healthcare it's, has been drastically reduced, um, there are still substantial parts of the population that pay out-of-pocket to access healthcare, despite the availability of our national healthcare uh, scheme. And also the fact that the healthcare scheme does not cover uh, covers just basic health care, and uh, sometimes leaves people with much more complicated health care issues uh, to basically pay out of pocket. Uh, so these issues with our health care system uh, needs to be addressed, for sure. 
you so very much, Doctors Olamide Okulaja and of course Dr. Joseph Bene speaking to us from Ghana. Thank you for your thoughts there and do stay safe, both of you. Thank you for having us.